In this video, we're going to talk about revolving the region between the graphs of y equals x and y equals x squared around first the x-axis and then another horizontal axis other than the x-axis and see how that looks. Now, we're going to be revolving this first around the x-axis. So if you want to kind of imagine what that looks like, it's going to go around like this. So when we take our slice, that's the slice that'll be getting revolved around the x-axis. Now if I were to take this slice, pull it and turn it flat so it's on the paper, I would get something that would look like this. Notice there's going to be some empty space in there and then that dot represents the x-axis. So since we're trying to need, do a volume, we're going to need the volume of the ith slice. Well, let's give this a thickness of delta x, since this is going to be our x-axis and this is our y-axis. And what we need are two radii, one for the small circle and one for the big circle. Notice that the big radius corresponds to this graph right here, the graph of y equals x. So that radius let's call it big R for the big radius, is actually just x. It's our function y equals x. Our small radius right here, notice no matter where I look, the small radius is x squared. So this is the small radius and it's equal to x squared. So basically what we're doing is we're taking the volume of the whole cone that would be created and then we're subtracting out the volume that would be created by revolving x squared. So, I'm going to do this in a couple of steps. So I know that for the, the big part, it's going to be pi times capital R squared dx. That's going to give me the big section. And I'm going to subtract out the small one, pi little r squared dx. We need some limits on these. Well. These graphs intersect at 0, 0, and 1, 1. And since we're going to use the x values, x is going to range from 0 to 1. And that's for both of them. So what we could do, sorry, this isn't the ith slice, it's for the volume. What we could do is put these in a single integral, which is a lot of times how you'll see the formula. 0 to 1 of pi times r squared minus r squared dx, where r is a function of x. Now, a couple things that I see happen. You can't subtract the r's and then square it. They're squared separately. And don't forget, pi has to get multiplied by both of them. But we're ready to set up our integral. We have 0 to 1. You can pull the pi out front of if you want. I'll do that in the next step. And big R, like we said, is just the function x. So x squared and then little r was x squared squared dx. So we have pi times the integral from 0 to 1 of x squared minus x to the fourth dx which is pi times x cubed over 3 minus x to the fifth over 5 from 0 to 1. Plugging in the limit of 0 is going to be 0 so it's just pi times one-third minus one-fifth, which if we get a common denominator, this is five-fifteenths minus three-fifteenths, so two-fifteenths pi, or two pi over fifteen. Now, while I have this drawing, I want to change this one up just a little bit. So let me get some fresh paper here. What if we wanted to go along a rotate this around a horizontal axis that's not the x-axis? For instance, what if I wanted to rotate it around the line y equals 1? It's just a small adjustment. So let's at least see how we set up this integral. So I have the line y equals 1, and now what's going to happen is I'm going to rotate around that line. And this is going to get rotated around that line as well. And this is going to get rotated. Really, the only change everything is going to stay pretty much the same except for what our radius is. So notice for the graph of x, 
the radius is still x plus whatever that distance to the horizontal axis is. So that red line that I just put in there is x plus 1. Similarly, for our graph of x squared, we know from here to here is x squared. We're adding 1 here. So that's x squared plus 1. So now, when we go to set this up, we have pi. It's still going to be from 0 to 1 in terms of x's. It's still going to be the big radius squared minus little radius squared. All that is all staying the same. Really, all that's changed is what our radii are. And in this case, all we're doing is adding 1. So it's going to be x plus 1 squared for the big radius minus x squared plus 1 squared. So again, those plus 1's came from the fact that we were going around the line y equals 1. So what you do is when you're going around an ax, uh, horizontal or, or even a vertical line that's other than your axes, you need to identify what your new radius is. Let's simplify this a little bit because it's actually not going to be a terrible integral. It's just a bit of work, a little bit of algebra. Uh, we'll FOIL that out and we have x squared plus 2x plus 1 minus, if we FOIL this out, x to the fourth plus 2x squared plus 1 dx. So it's not too bad of an integral. We'll go ahead and finish this one since we've come this far. So 0 to 1, we've got to combine like terms. So I have an x squared. Now don't forget this negative is going to get distributed. x squared minus 2x squared, so that leaves me with a negative x squared. 2x, there's no other term for that, so plus 2x. Plus 1 minus 1 goes away, and we have a minus x to the fourth dx. I'll just do this one piece by piece. When I go to find my antiderivative, uh, we'll have negative x cubed over 3 plus x squared minus x to the fifth over 5 from 0 to 1. And again, I'm not going to have to worry about the lower limit on this particular one since it's 0. So I'll have pi times negative 1 third plus 1 minus 1 fifth. And let's just go ahead and finish this off. Pi will have 15 fifths minus 5 fifths minus 3 fifths, so minus 8 fifths. So when all is said and done, we're going to get 7 pi over 15. So again, that's how you can revolve a region between two curves around the x axis. You'll sometimes hear this called the washer method because our slice looks like a washer. We can also revolve it around an axis or a line, or excuse me, we can also revolve it around a line that's perpendicular, excuse me, we can also revolve it around a line that's parallel to the x-axis very easily by just adjusting our radii.